Hello, I'm David Gauntlet. My pronouns are he, him, and I'm a Canada Research Chair in Creativity at the Creative School, Toronto Metropolitan University. This is a Pecha Kucha presentation from our Rubik's Conference. I called it Identities, Creativity, Practice, Process and Change. That's a list of five words which are important to me and are interconnected in ways I will explain. Doing a Pecha Kucha at our Rubik's Conference is now established as a kind of recurring annual thing in January or February. And in six minutes, it always seems a good opportunity to reflect and see where I am and what it's all about. I've got a basket of different things, just as we all have a basket of different things. And this is a good chance to think about the overall shape and balance of the basket, what it means and how it could be better. The basket of things, by the way, is how I explain to the practice-based PhD students at the creative school what they're meant to be doing. They're on a journey, they try out different things, experiment, and gather all this stuff in a basket tied together with the story of why this thing led to that thing led to that thing. I guess in all of this you've got the interlinking of practice and ideas and wanting to make a difference, always the relationship between doing and thinking and making. And then there's the sense of ongoing unfolding journey there at the bottom. The unfolding is learning and discovery, but it's something else as well, and I'll come back to that later. For wanting to make a difference, there's always the worry that a thing is not really a thing, is performative. And there's not just one solution to that. But one thing is, I think, because everything is interconnected from individual to community to the broader structures then supporting particular individuals and changing how we do things on an everyday life level does then ripple outwards. The kinds of practice-based work I like to support are often exploring new ways of being. Other methods seek to describe aspects of the world as they are, but practice-based work is about what could be. And I think that's why it's so central to the creative school and something distinctive that we can make our own, that we're already making our own. It's empathic and inclusive, it's not domineering or extractive, and it's not trying to box anyone in. So I'll talk about a few things and projects. Our Shirk-funded Reframing Creativity project is in its third and final year. We recently did some workshops which began with the naive idea that we wanted to collaboratively build some useful kind of magic tools that would support creative people in difficult times. But the number one finding is, and I'm quite happy about this, the number one finding is that magic tools that solve all your problems don't exist. Our participants did experience some magic, but that was just in the workshop itself, sitting around talking with other creative people about the creative process. So we want to support creators in different ways, and in product news, me and Val Duarte have created this box of cards, which will be published by Biz Publishers in Amsterdam a bit later this year, uh, sold around the world. It stems from our finding that creators often talk to us about nature, how they wanted to be connected to nature, their inspiration from nature, and the ways in which nature caused them to reflect on their work in different ways. And so that led to the prompts and ideas in the box. Meanwhile, with FF Granados, I'm doing a directed study course on queer abstraction. That is in part about how things can be expressive and fuzzy, but also be political without being just literal messages. So abstract art is queer because meanings are in the margins, under the radar. And when you make music, it's always going to be expressive and fuzzy, and you want to be political without being just literal messages. You can be dissonant, not necessarily dissonant in sound, but dissonant in spirit, pushing against the dominant things. And queer abstraction is about resisting people wanting you to conform to particular labels, opening up a place for exploring and discovering without being tied to particular ideas about what kinds of people do what kinds of things. FF recently wrote a whole thing wondering about the relationship between ideas and practice and how it all fits together. But he ended up saying, for me at its best, doing a PhD presents me with an opportunity to reflect on the ways practicing as an artist has cooked my soul. I had to say, is that good, cooked my soul? Apparently it is good. And for me too, doing my own creative practice feels kind of self-indulgent, but I feel I need to do it so I'm in the woods with everyone else. And also, it really keeps me alive. So this I released in December. It's even got vocals on it. But I, I do now have actual people listening to my music, which is ever so nice. 
it sort of wasn't the point. But also, some people listening is better than no people listening, psychologically speaking, and even if it's meant to be irrelevant. And in April and May, my label, Unfolding Records, will be releasing the new mini-album by Kalais and Kalaitschelvan, which we've supported him to make, and it's amazing. It's a gentle, unfolding, super interesting blend of different cultural influences that Kalaisen has embraced. It's really nice. You'll like it. And we're really proud to be releasing that. Back in this ongoing conversation, the directed study, I was talking to FF on Monday and he said, I haven't been out. I'm like Hildegard of Bingen. And I said, hey, where'd you get your references? And also, are you like Hildegard of Bingen? Let's look at Wikipedia. Hildegard of Bingen, 12th century German Benedictine abbess and polymath, active as a writer, composer, philosopher, mystic, visionary, and as a medical writer and practitioner. <laughs> um, obviously, it's not really about arguing about Hildegard of Bingen. What it's about is the unfolding journey that I mentioned at the start. It's what we learn and discover. But this wiggly line is also the love and relationships and connections that develop and drive us on, the ongoing conversations that make it delightful as well as meaningful. So that's it. There's my website where you can see about my creativity book, creativity audiobook, sculpture projects, music, and stuff about practice-based research. Thank you. Peace. <laughs>